Okay, first order of business is to um, is a review of the minutes from our meeting on March 18th, 2021. Did everybody get a chance to read those? Yeah, look, look good to me. I, I move to accept the minute. Thank you. Uh, second on that? Yes. Thank you, Margaret. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. Approved. I'm doing the minutes as we go. Um, okay, crop weather conditions and farm activities. We were just talking about that. Is I have my fingers crossed that the drought conditions have, if they haven't passed already, that they will soon pass. Um, I've thought that we were a little bit behind schedule this year. Um, the early season crops like um, potatoes and sweet corn under plastic, and there's some asparagus being planted, but it seems like it was late and I could be wrong. And I, I attributed that to the, the cool temperatures. But uh, Margaret, what have you heard? Have you heard anything about weather conditions and farm activities that's, you know, that suggests that we're behind schedule or, or are we right on time? I think you all have a better sense of that than I do. Okay. I, I'm not hearing, you know, drastic things either way, but I, I think you all know more than I do. Yeah. Well, there, asparagus is starting to get picked this week in earnest. So that's, uh, you know, first week of May, that's about right on time as far as I know. They've so, been picking it for about a week anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it came up early on some of the lighter ground. Then we had snow of all things and in some cold temperatures, but it seemed to forge its way through that and now it's okay. So, all right. Any other local farm topics or concerns? And Margaret, I'm going to get to your stuff a little bit later. I'm going to call that. Yeah, uh, I'm going to call that other uh, other ag issues and events. So, how about uh, farm topics or concerns? Any of those? Not for me. Okay. Usual. <laughs> oh, you know what I did? Of all things, I read it in the paper today. The um, the, at the town meeting, the Waitley Planning Board, let me find it, geez, not prepared, um, has made a motion for the Waitley Ag Commission to be included. Yes, the Waitley, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, well, let me find it. You're gonna dump the blame off on us, huh? Well, you know, they're at least adding us into the discussion. Yeah, yeah, no, so, that's so, but and, and it's going to get voted on at the uh, the town meeting coming up in June. So, so that's some interesting notes. I, and I didn't realize it was happening until I saw it in the paper today. Oh, yeah. uh, and now, of course, I can't find it because it's right in front of me. No, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I thought it was a few days ago that I saw it. Planning, it, nope, it's, it's uh, today's paper. Wait, uh, planners send zoning changes to town meeting. Uh, so it's going to require the submission of digital files for site plan reviews and adding the agricultural commission to the list of town boards that receive the plans. So that's that's a step in the right direction, I guess. And the other one, there was another one in here too. Oh, here. Oh, this is from Judy Markland. I sent specific invitations to the housing committee pointing out that the change of, oh, accessory apartments. And this is a, as amendment to um, accessory dwelling units. Uh, and I sent a notice to the Ag Commission. So apparently there's something coming up at the town meeting about um, uh, accessory units and I, I'll, I'll make sure I put it in the minutes. So, so we are gonna get a copy of the digital files for site plan reviews. And we were included on um, the article about accessory dwelling units. So now why accessory dwelling units, 
could be for labor housing, maybe. I don't know. Nicholas just popped in here and said, if we want a guest speaker to explain that to us, he's happy to do that. Is he available to speak? Yeah, I have to go get him. He went back downstairs, but hang on one sec. Okay. <laughs> wow. That's planning or luck or both. I'm going to add him to the agenda. Okay, he's on his way. I'm That's going to let fine. Him in front of the hey, y'all. Nicholas. Hey. hey. Thanks for thanks for giving us some uh, background about this. Uh, uh, let's see, accessory dwelling units. Um, yeah, what it really is is a clarification of our existing bylaw. Okay. Um, years ago, um, the planning board decided it would be good to encourage the reuse of buildings in town and to make more affordable housing. So um, we said, we proposed something that was passed at town meeting to allow like if you had a barn or an outbuilding or like a you know some part of your house you could convert it into an apartment up to 800 okay. square up to 800 square feet um somebody built a garage they applied for a permit to build a garage but they wanted to convert it immediately into an apartment and okay. the zba approached the zba was going to rule on it as a special permit and they approached the planning board and said what do you guys what did you mean when you came up with this bylaw and we said well we we're trying to make more affordable housing we wanted to make it easier for people to uh have <clears throat> yeah ha to make more housing for people in town who anyways uh so the ZBA decided, yeah, you could apply for a permit to build an outbuilding and put an apartment in it immediately. Now okay. there's, there's this big movement to build small houses. And um, there's been a couple in town that have been built um, that are up to 800 square feet, which is kind of like a small house. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm no longer on the planning board, but I think the feeling of the planning board was maybe um, look, the intent was like if you had a, an existing building, you could convert it now, uh, but we wanted to be flexible. Uh, okay. So this is like kind of making it more clear. If, yep. um, uh, if you want to do something brand new, it has to be 600 square feet or less, which is pretty small. If you, if you have an existing <laughs> building, it can be 800 square feet. You can make an apartment. Okay. Uh, so I, I don't know if that explains it. Uh, For our minutes tonight, you know what? I know a lot more five minutes than I did five minutes ago. So thank well, you very much. Nice. That's kind of you uh, <laughs> to say so. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm in favor of it. I think it seems like a good, uh, you know, bylaws are always complicated. They never, like, it's hard to, how to make a, a law or rule that fits all circumstances and exactly everything in town and um and when you do that you usually muck it up yeah it's, it's better to be general but well, the, the the accessory dwelling amendment would clarify what's exempt and what qualify or what needs a permit and not only that but it kind of sets boundaries on on what can be done and what can't be done. It's yeah, and a little more restrictive for new construction. So okay. you're going to do something brand new, because uh, otherwise it was slightly a sense like it means any any lot could have could be a, could have two houses on it essentially. Yeah. Which. Well, yeah, and, and you also mentioned that the the tiny houses, you know. 10 years ago, you would have laughed that out of the town meeting, but now it's a legitimate concern and it's, a, it's an option for some people. So there is that. So, all right, well, thank you. I appreciate okay. that. All right. Doug, did you want to say something? Uh, I, I, I guess I don't really see how the Ag Commission needs to be involved in any way. 
I mean, other than somebody might want to convert a barn, I suppose, but. I, you know, if I had to guess knowing Judy Marklin, she was just trying to be thorough and complete and include us in the notification that went out. Yeah, and if, and if the Ad Commission had any issues related input. to it, any input, but if you have no input, okay. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. Hey, Nicholas, thank you. I appreciate it a lot. Yeah, okay. See ya. Okay, so... Hey, that's kind of a nice seg segue into the Community Preservation Act committee report. Doug, have you guys been up to anything in the CPA? Um, I or know. Uh, well, you know, I'm. I again, I'm. I am pretty. Per there are smart people on that committee, and I'm not one of them. <laughs> uh, but they're doing. Uh, you know, I think they're going to recommend a chunk of money get used to pay down the town hall debt. Uh, and then the Veterans Memorial Park uh, upgrade is happening with the, the endorsement of that committee. Mm -hmm. uh, and if there are other things, if there are other things the money is being recommended for, I don't remember them at the moment. Okay, but nothing that's specific to um, the, the ag no. I not, mean, it really, the, the only time that they even considered it, well, they, one of the buckets is for open space that that's consistent, but uh, usually the only time that, that the open space bucket is used is when we have um, ag preservation restriction requests. Um, I've tried to get the snowmobile club to put in requests for like trail maintenance or, or trail improvement. They could use some of the open space money there to improve hiking trails. And I think we are going to do that, but um, you know, the, the lion's share of the money goes to other places than the open space for CPA. And that's kind of uh, unfortunate. So, okay, let's see. Hello, whoever just joined us, who, who's coming, who entered our meeting? Okay, that's fine. All right, Doug, back to you. So, so there isn't anything, uh, there's no activity for this meeting. Do you expect anything to happen over the summer? Probably not, huh? With the CPA? Uh, I, you know, to be honest, I, I listen into the meetings and occasionally add something, but uh, <laughs> I mean, okay. I, you know, I, I, I'm not like hardcore paying major attention i mean I, yeah. I think we were not gonna meet again maybe but i you know yeah yeah i i know and, and a lot of the members on that have a background in either municipal administration or municipal accounting and more often than not they were talking way over my head so oh yeah yeah i like oh. i say there's smart people in that room and i'm not one of them <laughs> All right, the next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, agricultural preservation restriction. Uh, Margaret, what's happening? No, no new news. <laughs> I think, no that, you know, the Sobieski APR is closing, the Ashman one isn't. That's, but I think that's what I told you last month. Yeah, okay. Uh, what, what's the delay on Ashman? Their barn blew down and oh, yeah. they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. Uh, okay. So they may or may not go forward with the APR. Oh my goodness. That, so that was Lawrence's barn or must have been. Yes. Uh, yeah. And, and I would, uh, I don't know, the, the barn coming down may affect the, the appraised value of the farm too. So well, I think. I think, yeah, that's true. But the, I think an issue is that they may want to replace the structure and they may okay. want to put it in a spot. Okay. Um, so I think the, the three Ashman households are sort of having a group conversation about that from time to time and okay. uh, trying to decide what they're going to do. Okay. All right. Um, 
Okay. So let's see. I'm coming right down to it. Um, other ag issues, the Franklin County Regional Government Climate Change Initiative. Um, did you all get a chance to see what Margaret sent out in an email this afternoon? I have that here. I could read it quickly if you why want. You would have. I'm really sorry that I sent it so late. I, I forgot about it, to tell you the truth. Um, okay. But I, Hang could, on. I, I think it's simple enough that I could read it and we could discuss these items. Okay. I will yield my the floor to you, Margaret. Basically, the... The story is Waitley contracted with the Franklin Regional Con Council of Governments to work with the town to make a plan for how the town, you know, how the town builds resilience in the face of climate change. So there's a lot of there's a lot of recommendations like check all the culverts in town and figure out which culverts could stand up to, you know, heavy rainfall and big flooding and which culverts would wash out and you know, upgrade the ones that would wash out. So there's a lot of recommendations like that. But there's certain recommendations that have to do with agriculture and they would like our input. So I want to, I have not been part of this process. I did go to one of their public comment meetings, but I haven't, I'm not on the committee. I haven't really been part of it at all, but I think maybe because I did go to that one meeting, they sent me this document, which is a draft and they said, can the Ag Commission tell us what you think about the ag related items? So I think we could say, well, we could say whatever we wanted, <laughs> including like, that's, you know, that's not the most important thing, or that's not important at all, or that's critical, or we, we think really it's something else altogether. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for going, Margaret. You know, that's tag you're it, you know. I, I hardly went. I, I don't just I don't yeah, right. thanks. Um, and no good deed goes unpunished. Yeah, I know, so, it's fine. So uh, so the so the at there's I think eight, nine ag related items. Um and the first one is would it make sense to look for fu grant funding to install rainwater harvesting systems on greenhouses? I don't know anything about that. Like what kind of systems work on, you know, hoop houses. So I don't know whether you all know anything about that. Can you catch rainwater on hoop houses and use it for watering crops if there's a drought? Yeah, somebody uh, does. Uh, I know uh, uh, Dean Landell barred his farm. He's got oh, a yeah. little rudders on his barn and they run into a tank and he uses that for his, his greenhouses, so. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they take the they have the the, the the water is collected from the roof of the barn. Okay. Puts it in a storage tank, and then he uses that. You know, so. uh -huh. Be it beats the heck out of metered water. Yeah, yeah. Right. Hey, Doug, what do you guys do? Well, we we have a very large rainwater recovery system, but it's in a gutter connect greenhouse. Mm hmm. So, uh, I mean, I, I suppose it would be possible to do it on a smaller hoop house as well. Yeah, it might be. Now, are there are there any disadvantages? Or are there what, are there any concerns when you collect rainwater like that, Doug? No, not that I am aware of. I mean, do you have to anything. treat the water at all? We don't. It's filtered, but we we okay. don't. I, yeah. Um, in, if, if anything, you know, trying to contain rainwater or giving it a a place to go is going to help, perhaps, avoid erosion. You know, if a bunch of greenhouses were shedding water, uh, you know, and there were a, a nearby hillside i suppose under extreme circumstances you could create a washout i don't know that i've ever seen that but yeah um, but managing the water by collecting it is is certainly uh has been beneficial to us okay okay all right so that sounds like i mean so that's the, that's one about, we support okay great um so then there's a couple that has to, a couple of recommendations that has to do with 
if we're having, you know, hotter summers, do people working on farms have enough access to water and like adequate breaks to deal with the heat? So they've recommended, there's two recommendations related to this. One is some kind of training program so that, you know, crew leaders understand how much water you need and how much break you need if it's really, really hot. Like, is there a need for training related to that? And the other question is, is there access to potable water, you know, in all the places people are working on farms in Waitley, or should the town try to figure out access to potable water in some places? I don't think there's any issue that needs to be solved there. Um, personally, I, I, I don't. I don't think the town has to get involved. I mean, it's kind of a basic requirement that that sort of thing is provided. I think the labor um, labor people make sure they give you guidance for that anyway. You know, I remember getting something a while back about you know hydrating and all this. And, you know, they go through yeah, the signs yeah. of being, you know, you know, you know, overheated and you know, but uh, you, you know, with, with me, we're all close to the farm. We all have close sources of water, and the guys are good about, you know, they take water with them all the time if they're out back, and you know, so they're they're not tied down anyway. They can do whatever they want and get water, you know. Mm -hmm. So, do you think if people are taking, you know, if you're putting people in a van and taking them to a field that's, I know this might not be your case, your situation, Jim, but in other situations, if yeah. people are, you know, people are getting in their trucks or getting in a van and going to a further field, like they bring, there's a place on the farm, they can get water, they bring it with them, yeah. even if there's not water on in that field. Yeah, yeah, they usually bring a cooler with them, you know, you know, a big, uh, like a, you know, that's what we use, we, I leave one in the, in the, one of the coolers, you know. That's, uh, right. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I mean, just judging by the number of uh, empty water bottles and Corona bottles and Motello <laughs> bottles on the edges of all our fields, um, I think everybody's good and lubed up. <laughs> okay. Great. All right. Then there's this item that says, partner with CESA to open a line of communication with local farmers, which could be especially, use, especially useful after a weather event to document damage. There's several places in here where they say like, partner with CESA, partner with UMass, partner with NRCS. That doesn't mean that they've set up a plan for this with that organization. I think it means they're just trying to convey like, there are other people out there doing things that are related to this. So I don't, I mean, certainly if there was a, I don't know, a hurricane in Waitley, I guess I think the town of Waitley sort of knows who the farms are and can reach out to them. Certainly if CESA could be helpful, we would be helpful, but I don't, I'm not sure there's a need for sort of some new formal thing, but I, I don't know what you all think. No, and depending on, on the weather event, there's both the federal emergency and state emergency that, that have a pretty good database of the farms and the, their their farm activities in the area so um but you know what outreach is is great and anybody that could help with that is is more than welcome okay so i would so support it's that it's a matter of the town knowing you know that they could contact any number of agencies mdar right. usda you know CISA possibly sure um, but it's not like there's a lot to set up. Okay. Okay. Then there's an item that says CISA works with local farmers to increase their resiliency to climate change. Partner with CISA to identify opportunities to support farms at the municipal level. I, I have to say I'm not entirely I mean, it is true that we are interested in helping people figure out strategies to respond to climate change. Uh, and we think there's, you know, there are some strategies, but then there's an awful lot of things that, you know, it's hard to know what to do about, like you can't right. get new land if your land is prone to flooding. So um, I'm not quite sure what would come out of this to tell you the truth, but I, maybe you all have great ideas.
I I I don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know how practical any of that sounds. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next one is a, is sort of similar, but a little bit more specific. It says, um, seek funding to create a municipal database to show how local farmers are adapting to climate change, which could provide information, include information about, you know, grant funding that people got to, you know, do certain things. I, I guess, well, I shouldn't say what I think. You should say what you think first. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I understand what, what that was. I think they're suggesting that the town could make a list that says, you know, Full Bloom has put up a lot of, you know, they have a lot of land under cover because the weather, I mean, this may not be your explanation, but because the weather is increasingly <laughs> unpredictable. And so growing things under cover, you know, is a way to respond to climate change. So you know, if some farm hasn't thought of that, they could see it on the list in the town offices or on the town website. Yeah, I, I would come at it from a little different angle it is to support and encourage uh, the local farmers that are adapting climate climate strategy, you know, and, and, and and if they're willing to identify them as being like an early adapter of something that that might be you uh, beneficial to all the far other farms in the area. So, yeah, that, I, that's good. I think that's the way I would approach it. I guess my question is, John, is it helpful? I mean, it seems to me that NRCS is is collecting that kind of information. They are. American Farmland Trust has a big new climate and soil yeah, yeah. project, maybe that they're doing with NRCS. Um, so I guess uh, I, what I'm not sure is, is this the kind of information that makes sense to collect at the town? Like, should the town be trying to stay on top of the early adopters and what they're doing? Or yeah, is it already I, I, by other people that farmers would turn to? I like this early initiative, and I think that it's going to dovetail nicely with a lot of the stuff that is proposed by the Biden administration. So they may be, maybe not years, but months before their time, and a lot of the stuff that they're proposing about climate change is going to come out in, in federal incentives or federal farm programs, and that would be administered by us and NRCS and the whole cast of characters in USDA. So uh, that's that's where I think this is coming. I I, th I think we're the the town group or whoever uh, started this is on the right track. But you know I think that if they just wait a little bit, that there's going to be some strategy and some uh, incentives coming out from the feds on this one. Okay. Number seven, to evaluate buffer repair our riparian buffers along the Mill River. We tried that before. I remember and, that. Yeah. And, and there are some that are vulnerable to erosion. There's also some water quality issues when anytime you have um, livestock, particularly cows, crossing streams, it, it, it creates a water quality problem or it can. And, <clears throat> but you know, with any of the riparian buffers that are offered through the federal government, particularly through NRCS, it's a voluntary program. So, the, the, you know, if, if a farmer tells us, no, thank you, I, I, we, I don't want your expertise or your money or anything else, then that's where it ends. And that is specifically where it has ended um, on the, the Belder farm, to, to be specific. Um, you know, I, I sure I, I think it's a, it's a, there again. It's a good initiative, and I think that the gang at NRCS has done their their due diligence and and done um, evaluations of the riparian buffers along the Mill River. But you know, I don't unless things change. I don't see that going anywhere. 
along the along that stretch of the Mill River in in Waitley anyway. Okay. Um, then the last two have to do with dust and uh, you know winter winds and uh, that's obviously something that we we know a lot about. Um, so yeah. the suggestion of working with UMass to identify cover crops that might work in different situations um, in order to help people keep their land covered in the winter um, or you know other techniques um, uh, that could help land stay covered and not blow as much. I'm going to yield to, to Doug and Jim before I say what I think. I mean, I, you know, I, I just think sometimes you can't, I mean, it's an unfortunate circumstance. You, sometimes you're harvesting something late enough, you can't get a cover crop on it. And, yep. you know, UMass isn't going to come up with some magic beans <laughs> that germinate and grow three feet tall in the middle of November. Right. Uh, as I, but don't get me wrong. I hate to see that land blown and, uh, you know. Yeah. I, the, the date the NRCS uses for establishing or for sowing cover crop is, is September 15th. And uh, unfortunately or fortunately, this past growing season, we had, we had farmers harvesting all the way up till almost Thanksgiving. So given that scenario where, you know, you're, you're doing your damnedest as a farmer to, to, to make income and if you can keep farming until almost Thanksgiving, it's you're going to do your best to try to put cover crop down. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And this is one of those ones like when we talked about it the last at the uh, the AgCon meeting in March is just it was an unfortunate set of circumstances is that we had a lack of snow cover, frozen ground and high winds on uh, sandy loam soil. And with no cover crop and, and you're you're not going to like the outcome of that it doesn't turn out well yeah so, I, I don't i don't know that well i don't know i mean maybe they're maybe maybe umass has you know we all know what the solutions are uh it just doesn't always work i mean i guess you could plant wind wind breaks and and disrupt you know make big fields into smaller fields with wind breaks that might help too but nobody's going to want to do that no in fact they're taking them out the, the some of the wind breaks that were were established way back in the, the ccc you know, they're, they're taking the windbreaks out to make the fields bigger or to, you know, it, it, agriculture is getting away from uh, labor, manual labor and into mechanization. And that mechanization more often than not requires bigger acres. Mm. Right. So it's kind of a, a catch 22. Okie doke. Uh, there was something about invasive species that did not come through on the version of the spreadsheet that they sent to me. So I guess my question is, is there anything, you know, that the town, some way that the town could be helpful in invasive species management that would be beneficial to farmers? Hmm. I can't think of any way. I mean, I, I can't think of like agricultural weeds that are a problem that are invasive, you know, that happen to be also invasive species. I mean, they could all be invasive species. I don't know for all I know, but. Right. Um, and, and and even then, I mean, the one that comes to mind immediately for me is kudzu, but we don't have that here. I wish Patty was here. She took off. She could tell you every invasive species under the sun. The ones uh, that we see most around here are things like um, uh, loose strife. Um, oh, let's see. Wild cucumber is another one that you'll see sometimes, but it, it, that's fairly controlled. And 
I, I think the point is anything that would that would take um, the town to correct would also cost money. And that's that's a hard sell. Right. I mean, I think the town, I think the idea of this is that the town might come up with some money to, to okay. help with some of it. And I think probably there will be some grant money, you know, potentially for climate. I just don't know. I mean, I can think of like, you know, then I know the town has to do a lot of management of not weed, you know, along the roadside, but I yeah. don't know of overlap between those kinds of invasive species, you know, not weed and bittersweet. Yeah. With agricultural weeds. Although yeah. maybe you all are managing those same things on the edges of your fields. I don't know. Right. I think a lot of that not weed wasn't that in, in, uh, intentionally planted years ago for erosion control. Yes. So is kudzu. Oh, I see. <laughs> I didn't know that about kudzu. No good deed goes unpunished. Yeah. Well, that not weed. I don't know. I, it's it's on a, the edges of a couple of our fields, and it's from my perspective, it's just kind of sitting there doing its job. It's it's certainly not a nuisance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I think that as long as you have good crop management on your farms, you're going to control anything that's invasive. Yeah, right, right. You know, poison ivy is invasive, but we keep that in control. Right. So I guess the last question is, is there something that you would put on this list? Like if the if the town was applying for a grant from the state to help the town respond to climate change, is there something you would want them to put in there that would benefit farms? I, I can't think of anything. I mean, you know, I, I, I can, I could, I don't know if it's, if somebody were to build a big greenhouse and, and getting some, some money, some help, financial help to collect and manage rainwater. I mean, that, that makes an awful lot of sense. Okay. Yeah. I agree with that one completely. And I mean, I think the other thing I, you know, I could see is any establishing any kind of irrigation infrastructure. <coughs> oh, to convert from like an overhead to a trickle. So you, um, you know, buried mains on a farm. Okay. Uh, you, uh, trying to get trying to get a big culvert underneath the road when it's getting paved, so that uh, the river can irrigate. Uh, land on the other side of the road, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, helping to install irrigation landings um, where the river is not as accessible. That that sort of thing. Yep. Pumping stations. Yep. Or pumping landings. I mean huh. that 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 I could see being useful if there were funds available to help with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or, or not only that, but funds, technical advice, permitting on that is like ridiculous. Sure, so any any kind of help there would be welcome. Okay. What about drainage? Like, it, would it? Are there places that people are, you know, putting in tiles or tile drainage that wasn't there before, or cleaning out yeah. drains that? You can do it. You can you can do it, but you got you got to jump through some hoops. The first one being the concom. You you know before you start cutting trees or draining wetlands. Yeah. Right. What uh, about? But if it's an a field that's been in agricultural production, but it, you know the poor drainage is becoming a bigger problem because we get yep. more torrential rain you know with you, funding for that kind of drainage that, you know it hasn't been since the the oh, geez i'm dating myself here now but since the 1985 food security act 
uh, drainage was a bad word. Uh, so they've really restricted any area or uh, they've tried to restrict uh, a lot of the area that was farmed that had any kind of hydric soil on it. Um, but there are situations where, you know, the farm has a history of, 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 of being far, uh, the land has a history of being farmed before 1985. And some of that land could use drainage on it and, and any kind of financial support, or again, technical assistance to do that would be welcomed by farmers. And, you, you know, I could, I could make a case or make an argument that that would help with uh, climate change. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a good one. Okay. I'll, I'll write that one in the minutes. So. Okay. Well, that's the list. If you think of anything else in the middle of the night and want to send it to me, I'll pass it along. Okay. Sounds good. Any other comments or questions? John, I, I remembered in reading the minutes that you were going to talk to Brian Domina about using the Ag Committee Commission's budget for making a contribution. And I yeah. know what happened with yeah. that. Yeah, you know what? I, I got uh, an email back from Lynn Sibley, and she said to me that the, the only reason we had a $500 budget was because we used it for our uh, uh, survey and our map. And I, I think our budget might have gotten pulled, but I will, I will rerun it with, with Brian again. That would be great. Yes, I will. Okay. Because I thought we were, I thought we were at 1500. Uh, yeah, I, no, I, thought, I think we I, were at 1500 in order to cover that printing cost or the map cost or something. And that yes. we normally had 500. Yeah. Um, I, I thought I saw an email back from either Lynn or Brian that said the Ag Commission can use its budget for however it sees fit. Uh, okay, I will, but, I will double check on that and get back to you. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, is, uh, Margaret, have you gotten any uh, contact with Al Averill about the project he's working on? No, I've gone nowhere with that. That's my fault. Okay. I mean, I talked to him once before our last meeting, but I will, I will try to move us. I know, John, you said you would work with me on that. And yeah, I, I, you know, I thought about that coming home this afternoon. I figured I'd mention it tonight. Yeah, that's good. So. I'm glad. I will okay. Work on it. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Um, I, w I will just say that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to these CPC meetings and I feel like I don't contribute very much. Um, and maybe I'm not supposed to contribute very much. But uh, if, if anyone else is interested in, in being the AgCom rep, um, you know, I'd, I'd be mo more than, you know, I'd be happy not to do it. I'm happy to continue to do it. But if, if anyone felt like, boy, I'd, I'd really like to be a part of that CPC, um, you know, make, make, make yourself known. <laughs> make you an offer? Yeah. All right. I'm trying to get off another board. So if I can manage to get off it, I'll think about it. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? I need a, a motion to adjourn. I uh, move we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. All right. Uh, now, our fa first fall meeting is in October. So uh, unless something comes up, well, I will get back to you about the budget between before October, for sure. But uh, unless there's something that we need to meet, our next meeting will be held in October. All right. Okay. Have a good summer, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye. Good night. Hey, thank you for attending. I appreciate it.